Hello guys, welcome to Metin. So in this video, we are going to discuss about the anatomy of the mesentery or the mesentery of the small intestine. So what is mesentery? Mesentery is a broad fan-shaped fold of the peritoneum. It's a broad fan-shaped fold of the peritoneum. So it suspends the coils of the small intestine, which are nothing but as the jejunum and the ileum from the posterior abdominal wall. It will suspend the jejunum and the ileum from the posterior abdominal wall so it's a fan shaped fold of the peritoneum and it will suspend the jejunum and ileum all from the posterior abdominal wall what is the average width of the mesentery so it is about 6 inches 6 inches or 15 centimeter so the mesentery will extend only for the 15 centimeter and the maximum width will extend to 8 inches or 20 centimeter in the central part and it will gradually diminish towards the proximal and the distal parts so what is the general features coming to general features general features of the mesentery so the mesentery has two borders one is the attached border we have the attached border and then second thing we have is the free border so there is the mesentery then one is the attached border in the posterior abdominal wall and the free border will come from the attached border like this so free border will arise from the attached border so now let's look at the root of the attached border and also we'll look at the contents of the mesentery so coming to the root of the mesentery root of the mesentery So, the attached border, it is attached to an oblique line across the posterior abdominal wall. So, it is attached to an oblique line along the posterior abdominal wall. So, it is attached to the posterior abdominal wall in the oblique line extending from the duodeno-jejunal flexure to the ileocecal junction. So, this is the duodeno-jejunal flexure flexure and this junction is the ileocecal junction so the attached border will extend from the duodenal jejunal flexure to the ileocecal junction so this uh, duodenal jejunal flexure will uh, lie approximately to the uh, left of the l2 vertebra it lies to the left of the l2 vertebra whereas the ileocecal junction will lie at uh, the upper part of the right sacroiliac joint so what are the structures that are caused by the root of the mesentery so structures crossed by the root of the mesentery firstly it will cross the horizontal part of the duodenum so sometimes they may ask what are all the structures uh, uh, so sometimes they may ask what are all the structures crossed by the root of the mesentery so it is very important to remember firstly it will cross the horizontal part of the horizontal part of the duodenum it will cause the horizontal part of the duodenum and it will also cause the abdominal iota abdominal iota then it will cross the inferior vena cava also and also the right gonadal vessels right gonadal vessels and also the right ureter right ureter and also the right psoas major muscle right psoas major muscle so these are the structures that are crossed by the root of the mesentery which are nothing but as the horizontal part of the duodenum the abdominal iota inferior vena cava the right gonadal vessels right ureter and the right psoas major muscle so the root of the mesentery will divide the infracolic compartment into two parts so we have the supracolic and the infracolic compartments so this root of the mesentery will divide the infracolic compartment into two parts the right one and the left one so this is the infracolic compartment it will divide it into the right part and the left part so the free border of uh, the right part this one is the small right and it terminates into the right iliac fossa right part is a small it is triangular in nature and terminates in the right iliac fossa and the left one is larger 
it is left one is larger right compared to the right and this uh, the left one is larger and it passes without interruption into the true pelvis so it is quadrangular in nature quadrangular and it's larger than the right side and it will directly pass into the pelvis so now let let's discuss about the free border or the intestinal border but coming to the free border free border or it is also called as the intestinal border of the mesentery intestinal border so basically this is about 6 meters in length 6 meters in length or it is also in terms of it it's in 20 feet in length and it will enclose the geogenum and the ilium so the root of the mesentery is only 15 centimeter long but whereas the periphery free border is 6 meter or 20 feet in length so this will account for the formation of folds or pleats in the arrangement so it's its length so why is it this long because its length will permit the free mobility of the free mobility of the loops of the jejunum and the ilium and it also has fat deposition fat deposition along the root so it provides free mobility to the loops of the jejunum and ilium and it also has fat deposition along its root which will diminish towards the intestinal border so near the intestinal border it will present as a fat free or a circular windows and the amount of fat is greater in the distal part of the mesentery so coming to the contents of the mesentery contents of the mesentery so the mes uh, content mes mesentery will contain the superior mesentery artery and vein superior mesentery vein it contains the superior mesentery artery and the superior mesentery vein and the vein will lie to the right of the artery and then it will also contain the jejunal and the ileal branches jejunal and the ileal branches of the superior mesenteric artery then it also contains the lymphatics or the lacteals lymphatics or the lacteals then it also contains some lymph nodes lymph nodes which are around 100 to 200 in number and then it also contains some autonomic nerves autonomic nerves it also contains fat connective tissues and also the jejunum and ileum enclosed in the free border so these are the contents of the mesentery so lastly discussing about the clinical significance so the great length of the mesentery will permit the descent of the uh, descent or protrusion of the loops of small intestine into the hernial sac so this great length will allow the parts of the small intestine to herniate inside the sacs so this uh, will result into the inguinal hernias or the femoral hernias and the group of the lymph nodes when they become affected so they will adhere to the adjoining loop of the small intestine so they may also cause the intestinal obstruction they may cause the intestinal obstruction by affecting the lymph nodes and uh, these great length will allow for the intestinal and the inguinal and the femoral hernias sometimes what happens the when the failure of the root of the mesentery to fuse its entire length when the entire length of the root of the mesentery if it fails to fuse it may form of a it may form a sac of intraperitoneal hernia so it may form the intraperitoneal peritoneal hernia so that is called as the mesenteric parietal hernia of waldeyer mesenteric parietal hernia of waldeyer so what happens in this case when the, the failure of the root of mesentery to fuse over its entire length with the posterior abdominal wall. So this will allow a peritoneal pocket to be formed and as usual it may form a sac of the intraperitoneal hernia. So this is called as the mesenteric parietal hernia of the waldeyer. So this is about the clinical significance, the contents, the free border and the attached border of the mesentery. So if you watch the video till the end, please make sure to subscribe and hit the like button and share it to your other friends who are in need of the anatomy. Thank you so much.